Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. Last week we talked about the edge of our solar system and well, it seems kind of complicated. We're not sure exactly where it ends, but on the other hand, for clusters of galaxies, we know exactly where a cluster ends. Or do we? In this week's video, we're talking about the splashback radius. Galaxy clusters are the largest gravitationally bound structures in our universe, consisting of hundreds or even thousands of galaxies held together by their gravity. These clusters are embedded within massive halos of dark matter, the elusive matter that interacts only through gravity and does not emit, absorb or reflect light. The majority of the mass is in the form of dark matter and these dark matter halos are roughly spherical regions in space. So quite commonly, astronomers like me will describe them as spherical cows. They're actually quite complex in shape, but we can approximate them to be spherical. The dark matter provides the gravitational pull necessary to keep the galaxies bound to the galaxy cluster. Now quite often you'll see studies like DESI that claim to have catalogued hundreds of thousands of galaxy clusters and of course they're mistaken because these studies typically base their detections on a few galaxies seemingly close together on the sky. And when I say a few, I mean literally as few as three galaxies. And when I say seemingly close, I mean that most of them are probably just projection effects. Maybe the galaxies are separated by thousands of light years, but just look like they're close together when seen from Earth. Now, if you're the real deal, like myself, no brag, but seriously, you know that a galaxy cluster is really a cluster if it's a virialized system. So a cluster is only in virial equilibrium if inward gravitational forces are balanced by the outward forces of pressure. So if you're detecting your galaxies in X-ray observations, you can be sure that what you've found is virialized. During the process of virialization, the galaxies and dark matter particles move around in the formation and evolution of a galaxy cluster. They exchange energy through gravitational interactions. And as a result of this, the velocities of the galaxies and the internal pressure of the dark matter increase. This increased kinetic energy counteracts the gravitational pull, leading to a balance between inward and outward forces. Eventually, this will reach a state of equilibrium known as virialization. The splashback radius of a galaxy cluster is the boundary that separates the dense, virialized region of the galaxy cluster from its outer regions. But it's important to note that it's not the same as the virial radius, the region where the average density of a cluster is some characteristic value. No, the splashback radius marks a transition where matter reaches its maximum radial velocity and starts moving away from the cluster center. This can be two to three times larger than the virial radius. Yes, I know, it's kind of confusing. It's actually a relatively new discovery, first observed in simulations in 2010, and then later confirmed in observations in 2014. At the splashback radius, the infalling matter reaches its maximum radial velocity, and then it starts moving away from the center, similar to water droplets splashing back when it hits a surface. This behavior is a consequence of a combination of two effects, the gravitational attraction of the galaxy cluster and the expansion of our universe. As matter falls into the cluster, it loses kinetic energy and starts to slow down. However, the universe is also expanding, which means that the cluster is getting larger. And as a result, there's this point where the gravitational attraction of the halo is no longer strong enough to overcome the expansion of the universe. And then this infalling matter is then turned around and sent back out. Observationally, the splashback radius is identified by studying the distribution of galaxies within galaxy clusters. Astronomers analyze the spatial distribution of galaxies, and then they measure their distances from the cluster center. They observe a sharp drop in the galaxy density at a very specific distance, which corresponds to the splashback radius. But the exact location of the splashback radius depends both on the mass of the galaxy cluster and the properties of the dark matter and the nature of our cosmic expansion. The splashback radius is a significant discovery because it provides a new way to measure the size of a galaxy cluster. And it has important implications for understanding the formation and evolution of clusters. 
Studying the splashback radius can help probe new physics like modified gravity or dark energy, constrain cosmological models, test theories of structure formation, and provide valuable information about dark matter. So there you have it, where is the edge of a galaxy cluster? Well, I'd say pretty certain it's the splashback radius. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.